In computing, there's always a new buzz term in the air. For example, when the PlayStation 4 was about to be released, we heard much of its APU and how it would bring compute shaders to games. After that, of course, DirectX 12 and Vulkan and other low-level apps started to become the forefront of the discussion. The latest buzz is around ray tracing, although ray tracing as a concept isn't new. The first real-time example of ray tracing dated back to SIGGRAPH 2005. But now we're reaching the level where consumer-level hardware is capable of running ray tracing in real time. Understand this is not just a buzzword or a dream for the far-flung future. Instead, we will be seeing vast improvements in lighting, shadows and other physical elements in the scene. In short, photorealism will make a leap forward and it will happen very soon, over the next year or two. Microsoft at GDC 2018 announced a new feature for DirectX 12, known as DirectX Ray Tracing, or DXR if you prefer. It's imperative for us to understand that this won't be treated as a second-class citizen, a feature underworked and without much thought. It is being used in the here and now. With Microsoft claiming a year of work on this and developers working on software to make use of real-time ray tracing this year. This is not a GPU pipe dream, ha 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 ha, but instead something for the here and now. This will allow hardware-based acceleration of ray tracing to be performed on a GPU, and does this by enabling a common language for the GPU and software, say a game, to communicate. Just how DirectX or any other graphic apps such as Vulkan act as a layer to speak between the game and the GPU driver. The game engine tells the appy what to draw, the appy translates that to the driver, and the driver, uh, well, just drives the GPU to do as it's told. Speaking of Vulkan, it's crucial for us to know that ray tracing won't be a DirectX 12 only thing, and ray tracing is also being pursued by Cronus's baby. Although we'll focus on DirectX 12's DXR for this particular video, just to keep things simple, AMD have also announced full support for an open source Vulkan ray tracing technology, using Radeon Ray's 2.0 as a backbone. According to AMD, developers will also be releasing the first title to leverage this technology later this year. While well, graphics technology has certainly evolved since its inception, the basics remain similar to how they ever was 30 years ago, and that is rasterization. You've probably heard of terms such as hidden surface removal, and the idea is very simple. You do not want to draw anything that you don't have to. Anything that's out of camera bounds or hidden by another object will not be drawn, thus saving GPU performance. Certainly graphics processes have grown increasingly complex with unified architectures allowing graphics cards to produce work much more complex and simple graphics of the early 90s, but in a nutshell, the basics remain in place. Workloads will be split up over the various components of a GPU, and you'll have geometry shaders which draw new triangles, pixel shaders to modify drawn and rasterized pixels, and generally one final task is to throw in compute shaders to perform physics and other such calculations. So all this is great then, right? The current model is fast, optimized, and well, looks pretty damn good. Yeah, but there's a problem. It just doesn't mimic what actually happens in real life. In real life, if you aren't looking at, say, a portion of a room with a lamp which casts a shadow against an object, that object, lamp, and shadow don't simply disappear. This could be a real pain when reflective surfaces such as, say, a metal kettle exist in a scene and how light would interact with it. After all, if the camera is aimed at the metal kettle, the metal kettle exists in the world generally speaking, that doesn't have the lamp and the object, so anything which in the real world should bounce off the kettle won't interact quite right in a rasterized scene. Developers have created tools such as static lights, shadow maps, and screen space reflections, but ultimately don't fully recreate the reality we're going for in the scene. It just isn't quite right. It's close, certainly, but just no cigar. For example, shadow mapping does allow objects off screen to contribute to the final rasterized image. We've seen techniques such as screen space reflection, which allows objects to cast ref reflections on other objects, such as, say, water reflecting the appropriate scenery around it. Finally, we have global illumination, modeling how light is bounced off of, of surfaces to other surfaces, in other words, indirect light. What we need to remember is that ultimately, while to us as a viewer, the game appears to be a 3D world and obeys those physics, after all, 
objects appear to have depth, stacked behind others and perspectively correct, in actuality they are really a series of 2D images, with each frame transforming 3D objects, mapping their position and size on screen, and then painting on the textures and other effects as required. Ray tracing is flexible because depending on how it's used, it can either be from a single light source or for a per pixel basis. But the concept is very similar. Light will simply bounce around the scene until it hits an endpoint, either the camera or another light source. There's always been a problem with ray tracing, and that is it eats computer processing cycles like they're going out of fashion. Now, for a movie, this isn't too much of a big deal. If it takes 30 minutes, for example, to render just a few seconds of video, not a problem. It's part of the budget of the movie, and it just is what it is. But for a game, this is not the case. Of course, when creating a movie, it's still annoying from the perspective of the artist if, for example, they want to change something in the final composition, but it will still be ironed out by the time it goes to the big screen. But a lot of work, in actuality, which is performed in ray tracing might be for very little. Another issue with real-time ray tracing. Imagine if some, or a portion of the work, is sent bouncing off the scene, not to be seen by the camera, at all, or hidden behind a chest of drawers that you're pretty sure is when the monster is going to make its appearance in that level. If you've ever seen Cinebench run before, you'll have a fair indication of how long it can take. Cinebench R15 doesn't create super complex scenes, at least compared to, say, a Hollywood blockbuster, and renders at just 720p, yet can take a minute or so, depending on your setup, for the CPU to crank through things. If you're familiar with the pros and cons of GPUs and CPUs, You'll know one of the things that GPUs have over CPUs is their massively parallel computational machines. A few dozen of, say, NVIDIA's CUDA cores won't really achieve anything particularly impressive, but throw hundreds or likely thousands of them at any problem, and they'll quickly demonstrate the power of numbers and crunch through the solution. So, to that end, Microsoft, AMD, NVIDIA, and other companies are pioneering graphics technology but need ray tracing to run on today's hardware, and Futuremark have a great case for demonstrating that, with its recent demo appear apparently running on current release GPUs. But also, while they're laying the foundations of this, they also need to lay them for the future, and specific bits in hardware and software ready to improve ray tracing performance if necessary. Essentially, ray tracing will run as a compute-based workload. So now we're all on the same page, think of DXR as a companion to DirectX 12. It allows the flexibility for developers to choose when to use it and switch back to standard rasterization techniques when they need to save performance. So if they feel that a certain item or a certain part of a scene requires this more photorealistic look, then they can decide to use ray tracing for that specific area only. According to Microsoft, there are four key concepts which we'll see added. The first is acceleration structure and is an object that represents a full 3D, 3D environment in a format optimal for traversal by the GPU. It's represented in a two-level hierarchy. The structure affords both optimized ray traversal by the GPU as well as efficient modification by the application for dynamic objects. We also see the inclusion of a new command list method, dispatch rays, which is a starting point for ray tracing to be added to the scene. This is how the game actually submits DXR workloads to the GPU. HLSL also sees additional shader types, including ray generation, closest hit and any hit, and mist shaders. These specify what the DXR workload actually does computationally. For example, when we see Dispatch Rays utilized, the ray generation shader will run. And fourth and last, the ray tracing pipeline state, a companion in spirit to graphics compute pipeline state objects, encapsulates the ray tracing shaders and other state relevant to ray tracing workloads. All ray tracing work uses command lists, just like other more traditional graphics techniques. This allows the CPU to issue a large number of batches of commands to the graphics card to process. Multiple command lists may be generated by multiple CPU threads, and the GPU will then perform low-level scheduling of work items, fully leveraging the gargantuan parallel throughput of a GPU to schedule its work and idle parts of the hardware. 
all of the synchronizing is ultimately left up to the application to control. And buffers and textures, for example, are a shared resource. This is crucial because it further lowers the overhead, not needing to, say, have multiple copies of the same texture loaded up in an area. In short, developers have full control here. And at a higher level, DXR introduces three new concepts to DirectX that the application must manage. Ray tracing pipeline state objects contain the compiled shader code, and this gets executed during a ray tracing dispatch. Acceleration structures contain the data used to accelerate ray tracing, i.e. they can be used to search for an intersection between rays and actually an object such as geometry within the scene. And finally, we have shader tables, and these define relationships between ray tracing shaders and their resources, along with scene geometry. The key takeaway here is for the first few years of its implementation, ray tracing will be used alongside standard rasterization techniques. Ray tracing will probably be used for things such as uh, global illumination or screen space reflections, slowly taking over those effects. Perhaps in the future, all effects will be eventually shifted to ray tracing, but that's going to be far too intensive for the near future. Scenes will be arranged and created with standard rasterization, but for the thought of ha adding in ray tracing, Microsoft have been working this technology for a year now, and NVIDIA have the technology key to Volta. Although at the time I'm recording this, Pascal is currently the GPU architecture of choice for NVIDIA, and Volta is only available in Titan V flavor. And while the cheapest Volta option, it's still, well, $3,000. Therefore, we don't know how GPUs will evolve from NVIDIA or, for that matter, AMD. Frostbite, Unity, Unreal are just a few of the game engines already confirmed to have ray tracing support fully baked in. 4A Games' new Metro looks amazing, and it's highly likely you've seen NVIDIA, Futuremark, and NVIDIA's own demos... And it's highly likely you've seen AMD, Futuremark, and NVIDIA's own demos, among many others. In theory, at least, with support also helped to simplify the workflow. Artists will no longer have to worry so much about creating shadow maps and other such details. Instead, ray tracing will be able to handle this stuff real time. So, from the perspective of the artists, at least, we should see an improved workflow, and perhaps it will also help them to create and design the next generation of games with better time constraints and even better visual effects. For PC gaming, at least, the future is certain. It is in the rays. But for consoles, the future is a little less certain. Vulcan is open source, and as mentioned earlier in this video, AMD and Kronos, along with other developers, are pushing ray tracing to games. Vulcan is certainly very capable of running on, say, the Nintendo Switch, but let's just be honest, its Tegra X1 GPU just does not have the grunt to make this an anywhere close to viable option. As for Sony, there's nothing stopping them from incorporating this technology and possibly having a translation layer there or adopting it natively within their own appy. After all, all low-level appies are fundamentally very similar. But would the PS4 or even the Pro have the GPU or system resources to do this? Perhaps... If under an FP16 calculation, it would be possible, given the Pro can run two of these per stream processor, thanks to them tinkering from Mark Cerny and his team of a Vega feature known as Rapid Packed Math. But for the Xbox consoles, it's highly doubtful the base machine's 1.31 T-flops would have the grunt or, for that matter, memory bandwidth. But, of course, we have the Xbox One X, the enhanced system and its vaunted 6 teraflops. In theory, the generalized shaders found there could run ray tracing after all, but still based upon Polaris slash Vega hybrid architecture. The question is, are Microsoft going to support it? And assuming they did, would developers find the GPU resources to throw at ray tracing? Perhaps a few select titles or perhaps some cutscenes where frame rate and GPU budget were more controlled. The issue with consoles, of course, is simple. Resolution. And as gamers, we quite often want to see a push for higher pixel counts. If ray tracing was used on these consoles, even the Xbox One X, it's possible resolution would need to go down a few notches. So perhaps it would be a toggleable option, much like how we've seen in, say, Rise of the Tomb Raider. As for the next generation of consoles, well, that's a completely different story. We simply don't know yet enough about the specifications of those systems to even hazard a guess. But assuming they are physical systems, in other words, non-streaming devices, and have 
a fair bump in GPU and CPU performance, particularly given the optimized nature of a console, developers leveraging some aspects of ray tracing for certain effects within the game, once again perhaps a cutscene, would not surprise me in the least. And obviously as ray tracing becomes more prolific in the industry, one thing is for certain, we will get better at optimizing that workload across the GPU. And eventually, just like any other resource or any other task that we've learned to program and develop, such as, let's say, anti-aliasing or compute-based workloads, we'll see a level of optimization there. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, and if you do subscribe, be sure to click that bell icon as per normal. But um, anyway, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.